Well, welcome everybody to another council checkup. I'm your host, Don <coughs> Walmsley. With me is our, is our mayor, Blake McCutcheon. Uh, good day to you, sir. Hi, Don. Good to be here again. Excellent. Um, first of all, a disclaimer, we are more than six feet apart. Uh, with the miracle of television, we can have that distance, and so that's why we're not currently wearing masks. We did coming in. Uh, we took them off when we sat down, and we'll put them right back on when we go out and that kind of thing. So we're being cognizant, and we'll probably talk more about COVID-19 as we go through. But let's start out with the uh, uh, topics of the day in terms of council. So uh, we've got <coughs> some, some stuff to go through here, but let's just start generally. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, it's, you know, it's fall. So, we, you know, we've kind of moved through our summer projects and uh, there won't be a lot of new initiatives now until uh, after the new year. But, uh, you know, we are wrapping up some of our projects from the summer. And, um, and as I, I, I maybe one of the first things I could talk about is that because of the year that we've had, and I, uh, you know, we are running a deficit, right? And, and I think we're like, I've talked to a lot of other municipalities, whether it be Minnedosa or, or rural municipalities. I mean, we're all having that issue, right? And um, as we know, uh, well, maybe a lot of people don't understand that, uh, federal governments, provincial governments, they can deficit uh, for as long as they want. Whereas a, a town like Nipah, we could get a reprieve for one year, but at the end of, end of 2021, we would have to cover our deficit for 2020. So, I mean, this, this does become a difficult time right now in our budget process, right? So right now, our, our, CA, our CAO, Colleen, and Denis, and uh, Public Works, and uh, Jamie, our CFO, I mean, we're sitting down and we're trying to see what uh, projects that we may have thought about moving forward on that we didn't even look at this fall and what we will have to even maybe curtail lit farther as we move into the new year. Because um, as you are aware, we did have the uh, one in a thousand year rain event this year, which created a lot of issues here for us in the town. And the town, you know, we have paid up a lot of those bills. And yes, we will get that money back at some point from the disaster fund, but that's not going to occur by December 31st. So that, that registers <coughs> as a deficit. Then. Right, that registers a deficit. So, I mean, that's just a, an issue we have. And I, I think um, I continue to go back to, you know, our election. When we had our election, we talked about the flats and we talked about our streets and we talked about communication. And I continue to feel somewhat uncomfortable, not uncomfortable, just disappointed that we haven't been able to fulfill those those promises that we made, right? But a lot of that is, is occurring now because of the pandemic and because of the fact that we just don't, any of that money that was slotted for those projects has been, has been taken away this year so that we can hopefully get back to a zero point in our, in our budget before we have to take it to the province of Manitoba. Okay. So what else is new? Well, um, I guess one of the big projects that we've been, I've always, you know what, and again, I didn't know this when I came on two years ago, but one of the biggest projects that I didn't understand at the time, which is really important for the town, is the CN property. Okay. And I mean, that's, I, you know, I, housing is, is a big issue in our, in our town. And uh, I mean, we believe that we're getting close to 6,000 people. I guess next year is census, I think. And we'll get a better idea where we're at. I mean, we're showing a census of 4,600 from our last census in 16, but obviously, I mean, we're way over that. And uh, I mean, it's our understanding that High Life does want to continue to grow here at some point. So uh, we've been working hard on the CN property. Uh, um, I mean, because we are such a growing town, we're not like a Standback, we're not like a Winkler, we're not like a Morden. Uh, there, well, there was no history of this town ever going to just go boom and expand. So you know what, developers really didn't see us as who we have become. So the town had to take the initiative and I mean, good for past mayors and past administration, they're the ones that set this in motion. And uh, we now have got our, our, our basic streets in, we have all the water and sewer in, and uh, Dimitri Schiller, who is our uh, person that's going to build, he, he is moving forward with uh, talking to people who want to build a house and uh, the lots are getting ready to be sold. Um, this, again, still comes with issues, right? Because, again, uh, hydro and gas is a big component, obviously, of our new project. And because of COVID and because of staff reductions, um, 
We've been bumped a couple of times in the queue for getting our hydro and gas to that, that property. We're now being told again, and I mean, it's kind of like other things. You have to trust people that eventually they will deliver on their promises. They're saying that they will have it ready for us before the end of the year, and we're hopeful on that. I mean, nothing is going to happen now with uh, winter setting in till next April, but I mean, it would be nice to be able to say to anyone that wants to develop or wants to build a house that, yes, we're ready to go. Um, and the other, the other issue with that, of course, is because we don't have water and gas, or hydro and gas there, is that uh, we have not been able to uh, get money from our developer, right? Because our developer is not prepared to hand over his check until he knows that he's good to go to start developing his lots. So again, that is also being wrapped into our deficit, although we hope just temporarily, and that once we do get the appropriate utilities there, that we'll be good to go there. So yeah, it's a bit <coughs> of a uh, chicken and egg thing. You need, yeah. You know, it's it's uh, I, it's interesting how uh, you know. You know, it's, it's it's just amazing how much money a town that's expanding as quickly as Nipawa needs. Like you know, you just have to have a tremendous amount of ability to, to cash flow, right? So we have a twelve million dollar lagoon, and you know, the government absolutely they did help us out. They did probably give us a little over six million dollars, but I mean, at the end of the day, we're not sure. But probably three to four million dollars of that's still going to come under the taxpayers, which is going to be you and me. Uh, our new reservoir, again, that is a $4 million project. And yes, the government did give us half of that, but again, that's going to be a half, half of that's going to have to come under the tax, uh, taxpayers' venue. So, I mean, and now with the CN property, and you know, even, even if we do get that moving forward, we already start to need to look forward to the next development. And I know our public works, uh, Denis, has already started to, to turn his eyes towards Eastview Lodge, right? Because Eastview there, we have the potential to develop another 10 to 12 lots there on, on the south side there as you look over the highway. And again, that's going to be the responsibility of the town to put in the water and sewer and the streets. And I mean, yeah, these things just, they eat up a ton of money. And uh, I mean, I think we did really good this year. I mean, we knew it was COVID. We knew the pandemic was here, and we uh, we held the taxes. I mean, there was a three percent increase from the uh, from the assessed value from uh, from Minidosa, and we locked our taxes on that. That anyone that paid that had only been assessed at three percent or less would not pay it any more taxes, and anyone that was assessed at three percent or more would pay the difference. Or if you were assessed at five percent, you'd pay an additional two percent. So I think we were really fair on that. At least I felt we were, and I think we've done the best we can to hold our, our taxes. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh, I guess we won't know until we start looking at our budget for next year, but it'd be interesting to see if the, if the provincial government, if the federal government's going to show up with any more money for municipalities. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right now, I, and it's just not us. It's, it's Rosedale, it's Langford, it's, it's Lansdowne, it's Minto Odana, it's Minidosa. We're all in that same position, right, where we have a lot of bills to pay, and and none of us want to, uh, to raise taxes and none of us want a deficit. So it's an interesting time. It's, it, it, there's <coughs> been a lot of ancillary uh, impact from COVID. Um, it's, uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go along. Um, just, um, you talk about the lagoon, we talked about the reservoir before, and it's, it's vital importance as this town grows, because you're right. Nobody, I don't think anybody anticipated that Nipawa was going to be a boom town. Well, and suddenly we, it's become one. And we see the effects of that, right? We have a contractor here working at one of our Touchwood projects, and he comes from southern Manitoba, Morden specifically, and he says they've come to a grinding halt there, right? Because they have not been able to make the deal with all the surrounding municipalities to, to expand their lagoon, yeah. right? And so that's created a huge problem for them and, and so you know what you're right we're very fortunate and like I said I'll go back to what I said before past councils past mayor had past started doing some forward thinking yep absolutely. And, and and kudos to them yeah no kudos to them um, uh, so <coughs> um, some of our favorites the uh, the asphalt recycler I hear it's sort of yep being started to be tested yeah, out even though it's cooler <laughs> weather <laughs> Denis was uh, at the council meeting last night and uh, he did talk about what was going on. He did talk about the CN property and where we're at there that we're getting ready to go. And uh, I did ask him specifically about the asphalt recycler and he said, yes, Blake, we have got it fixed and we have got it running. Um, it was late in the year, of course, so they were not able to use the normal hot mix they would use. He said they've used a cold mix and they have kind of sealed it over with the asphalt hot mix. He says they're not sure whether it's going to be a permanent fix yeah. or they may have to go back yeah. in the spring, but he said, 
besides that, though, he said it works really great. Excellent. Yeah, it's good. And it's, a, it's now a piece of our equipment, and it's one of those changeable pieces of equipment, right? You can take it off, and you can put a lawnmower on. You can take it off. You can put a snowblower on. It's, yeah, that's, I think that's been a really good idea where we've moved into that world where we're saying, uh, you know, we have the talent now inside the town with our staff and our experience, so why not, why don't we con take control of that rather than waiting for Brandon or Winnipeg yep. or whoever's yep. going to come out and say, well, you know, you'll have to live with our timelines. Yeah, I, uh, <coughs> frankly, I think it's probably a smart move, especially for a community growing to the size we are. Yep. Um, when you contract out, um, sure, there's perhaps, uh, uh, you don't have to worry about certain things, but when you have it all under your control, you have more control yeah. over a number of aspects, uh, financing, what's done, when, it, when it's done. Um, yeah. Like, you know what, I mean, even the fact that we're in a pandemic, I mean, even the fact that COVID is here, we know it's going to be here for a while. I mean, this, can town, this town is continuing to grow. I mean, High Life has not stopped uh, bringing in new employees. I yeah. mean, because there are people always leaving, yeah. too, of course. But, yeah, I mean, we are, we are adding, they're adding to their staff every day. I mean, we are in a boom situation for the town of Nipo, and, and And I know some people are not probably as comfortable with that. They probably did like the way our town was, but I mean, um, unfortunately, reality is here and we're trying to, to hold on to our past and our history, but we also have to embrace our future, right? Because it's coming. And, and <coughs> I think the whole country is feeling this. Um, just very recently, was it last week or just the week before, federal government announced its commitment to three years of immigration um, their numbers, they're looking at wanting to bring in over a million. Right. Now, these are all economic. Uh, a few of them might be refugees, but the vast majority are people coming to work. Yes. Um, because they realize that going forward, they continue to need that, that kind of uh, numbers coming in. So it, it, small communities like this are seeing that effect. Yep. They are growing. Yep. And, and uh, so it's not just simply a phenomenon here. And as you say, we just kind of got... I did not, we didn't just get caught here, but it's just that, you know, we're not kind of, people have always had that view of Southern Manitoba, right, as being the boom spot, and they called it yeah. that golden triangle yeah. down there, right? And, you know, people have never viewed that north of the number one highway, and I, I just think it's so exciting that we can now point at this and go, you know, when I'm talking to my MLA, when I'm talking to well, yeah. people in government, right? Well, we're talking, well, you take a look at Thompson, you take a look at Dauphin, you take a look at Russell, more people are coming into those communities. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, so, yeah. No, I'm very happy about that. I mean, I guess, um, what else I could talk about? You know what, we were in, in terms of what we had hoped to do for this fall for the town, like we, you know, obviously we, we wanted to do the Santa Claus parade. Yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, the chamber made the right decision, I believe. I mean, they just knew that with the code red that it was going to be an extremely difficult. And I don't think it was so much even the fact that the parade, you know, you might have been able to try to figure out social, but it was the fact that you have to actually build the floats. Like there was a lot of other moving parts in there, right? So you're going to put a lot of people together to build the yeah. parts, uh, you know, to build the floats and stuff like that. So I think that was the right decision. I, well, and what, <coughs> what's happened, and maybe we'll, we'll segue to that, <coughs> Um, is uh, really focused on time to light up Nipua, light up Nipua, that initiative. Uh, you'll find this uh, poster on the website. It talks about light up your exterior, light up an outdoor tree or decoration, light up a window, it doesn't matter. What I the program is essentially encouraging all residences and businesses to join the town and let your light shine bright every night from November 12th through to March. Just a sign of, you know what, we're all in this together. Let's keep things bright. <coughs> Great idea. Also, you can post a photo of your lights or decor on social media, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and on the poster, it's uh, number light up Nipua. So, and then you could go out and actually enjoy a walk. Because you remember, if you're appropriately attired, socially distanced, you can go outside and walk. Nobody's saying you have to stay inside your house or take a cruise in the car with your household unit. So check out the website. Um, recognizing that the upcoming holiday season may feel a little different. So um, this is a way to perhaps uh, not replace, but sort of somehow get a sense of something else going. Uh, we won't be having that Christmas parade, the Santa Claus parade. We're not going to be having the the Christmas wish sale, those kinds of events uh, have just been put on hold because of COVID. 
That's interesting. Uh, Councilor Gerard, he actually spoke to this last night saying what a great idea it was. And then he also, he talked to uh, Councilor Nadeau and said, well, Jason, you always have one of the greatest displays, yeah. right? And Jason yeah. said, yeah, I'm good to go. And then he talked to Darren Pudlow and he said to Councilor Pudlow, well, what about you? And Councilor Pudlow goes, well, you know, I happened to have a couple of feet of water in my basement this summer yeah. and a lot of my decorations got wiped out. So he said, I'm not quite sure what I can do this year because yeah. Darren always did such a great job too. Yes, but he did. Yeah. So it's just interesting when he, he yeah, just it's one of those years, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it, well, and you're right. <laughs> the other thing is uh, notice the holiday train, the CP holiday train that comes through. It won't physically come through, but you can access the holiday train at home. On Saturday, December the 12th, at 6 p.m., that's <coughs> mountain time. It's a little bit earlier our time. Um, you can join the CP online to celebrate the holidays. Listen to great music, donating to help food banks. And uh, this is on uh, the Nipua website, yes. uh, Town of Nipua website. Yep. Basically, cpr.ca slash holiday train. So there you go. Um, What's been interesting with COVID is we've had to take a look at new and innovative ways of doing similar or like things. Something that's just come out, and I'll give you some basic information for more contact. Hugs for the Holidays, Senior Edition. Um, essentially, it's, uh, let me find the right piece of paper here. Um, well, is that, do you know a local? senior uh, that could use a little extra cheer this Christmas? Does their family live far away? Are they living alone? That kind of thing. You can nominate a senior for this program and they'll receive a small gift, a few goodies, and a card from a local community member. It's a partnership, and I love the thing about small communities, there's partnerships. The Nipua Kin Club and the HAND organization, the Home Assistance Nipuan District, We'll organize uh, the receipt and, and distribution of the gifts in a COVID-friendly manner, no contact format. So really, if you're interested in finding out more information, and I think this is a really great venture, um, <coughs> you can actually nominate a senior by going on to a Survey Monkey, or you can talk, connect through the Nipua Kin Club Facebook, or simply call HAND at 204-476. 2009 to find out more information and more what it's about. If you've got a senior or you know of a senior that doesn't have close family, you want a way of having them some kind of uh, bit of cheer over the Christmas, this is the way you can do it. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, um, they've got all sorts of things. So I, I really encourage people to reach out, call hand, say, what's this hug for the holidays all about? And they will explain it and you'll get the information from directly from the horse's mouth and not from another part of the horse like here. <laughs> um, so um, really we're sort of trying to keep, uh, keep our head above water, but let's talk about COVID. And everybody's talking about COVID, but there's no reason why we should maybe give it a little, little chat here. We've, since March, we've been through that initial sort of lockdown period, then yep. it seemed to balance itself out, then we went to Code Orange when things started happening in Prairie Mountain Health, and then we went back again, and then with the COVID red in Winnipeg and the surround, that surrounding municipality, we were all told to go to Orange, which really, we'd been there, sort of done yeah. that, didn't seem to be a big issue yeah. for us, and now we're at Code Red, everybody, and understandably so. If you listen to the messages, from uh, Dr. Brent Rusin and uh, 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 Lynette, I, and I, I always remember her first name, yeah. Saragusa. Saragusa, yep. Um, their messages have been consistent. They have not deviated from uh, social distancing, proper hand hygiene, masks, just being only going out for essential services, being smart. We're seeing all sorts of challenges with that. But if we take a look at it from our perspective, if you take a look at that historic one, uh, sort of do a little synopsis and to where we are now and what changes or differences you've seen. You know, I, I think you're right. I, I think what I've seen in, in my role is that uh, when it came in in March, I think people were extremely diligent. And, and I think a lot of people were extremely fearful of what was coming. 
Yeah. Like I, I think we, I think we all took a really, most of us anyhow, took a really strong position that we were going to do everything we can to follow the rules, as you, as you just mentioned. And I think we did a great job in March. And then I think again in, and when we went through the orange, but again, those were, um, those were clusters in Brandon, right? So maybe we got a little off, you know, we just didn't really see the truth there because they, they were able to zoom in on just a couple of really big clusters and they got that fixed right away and then Prairie Mountain looked really good again. What I see now, and I have to admit, I even feel it myself a little bit, is we knew this was coming. I mean, we had the 100-year pandemic hundred, you know, back in 1918 that showed us that the yeah. second wave is coming. Yeah. Yeah. We knew it was coming, but... I, and, and I think we also knew that that fatigue was going to set in, right? That the, the people and the communities and individuals, they get fatigued with this, right? I mean, we're now into eight months. And I, I can even, you know, you can even see it when I talk to people, right? That that same dedication that we had back in March is not occurring now. And, and, and I'm not saying we're not doing everything we can, but I, I just don't feel like we just don't seem to be as... You know, people are starting to say, well, you know, maybe I could still get together and play cards or maybe I could still take my yeah. grandchildren for a weekend or maybe like, and I don't think that was occurring eight months ago. I think people are, are, have reached the point now where they're willing to take a little bit of risk. And the problem is when you take that risk, that eventually something unfortunate may happen, right? But I'm, I'm not sure, Don, how that gets fixed. I mean, we're humans, right? And humans like social yeah. contact. And, we, and uh, yeah. And I mean, I mean, we've done what we can, right? I mean, the, 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 the arenas are shut down and the, the gyms are shut down and the restaurants are shut down again now. And, and, well, and we haven't seen that long uh, enough yet to no. see the impact in the numbers. But the problem is we're in a small town, so we're able to control that. But as you get into the, I mean, that's the issue now that they're starting to look at, right? You get into the big cities, Brandon and Winnipeg, where you have the Walmarts and the Costcos. And I mean, they're not just selling food out of those stores, right? I mean, it, that, that's an issue they're having, right? People are going in there and they're buying Christmas presents and they're buying clothes and they're well, buying. And, and that begs the question, small businesses, like let's say a furniture store yep. or a clothing store um, who have been deemed non-essential, yep. uh, those larger box stores, are able to sell those goods and i think the argument is being made it is being made yeah. that that hey well, hang on a second yeah so stop them selling and i can understand i can buy in yeah but how come they can sell simply because they also have toilet paper which we don't carry yeah or those essentials yeah. and and uh, it, it it's hard because i don't think it's a simple it, it's it's not a simple black and white kind of thing completely black would be Nobody goes anywhere, does anything at all, ever, right. for a period of time. Yep. Uh, but then when you've got uh, oh, the upper, other side is, is chaos. Yep. Well, we're sort of in between. Uh, somebody was telling me yesterday, and I'm not sure if this is accurate, but essentially they had come across a breakdown uh, of Canada and the United States in terms of COVID cases per capita. Out of all the states and all the provinces and all the territories, Manitoba is third highest on yeah, the list. Yeah, no, I've heard that. I knew we were in the top three. So, um, yeah. Per capita <coughs> in North America. I know. Good Lord, what's happened? I know. And so the, the, the need to do something. But I think your comment about fatigue, people are, are COVIDed out. Yep. People are Zoom meeting out. Yes, they are. People are, yeah. are they want that contact. Um, I think all of us, whether we're really social or just marginally social, are missing that ability yep. to be social. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. And like I said, I don't have the answers for it. No. But I think we are still fortunate to live in a rural area like Nipua. I mean, I know, I, I just think it, because we, we still seem to be able to to manage it a little bit bigger than the, than the big centers, right? Um, and again, I, I mean, I got to give a lot of credit to High Life. I mean, High Life's done a spectacular job. I yes. don't, uh, someone mentioned that the other day that they could not think of another meat processing plant in Canada that didn't have a positive case. You know, so, uh, I mean, yeah, they've done, and I mean, yeah, touch wood because you never know, but I mean, they have done a spectacular job. and. It's made a big difference in our community, right? Because I mean that that payroll that they run. I mean that's. I mean it, it's. That's a, it's major. A, yeah, it's a huge part of our it's community. It's major for right? everything else. Yeah. It's major for all the grocery yeah. stores. Yeah. It's major for, you know, and and we've seen a lot of businesses come, 
it's uh, we have been able to maintain a fairly robust call. Co like I did ask that yesterday, here. just for I could maybe mention that today. Like I said, tell me how because you know most people do pay their property taxes by this September. Yeah, and we are ten percent higher people not paying than last year. So it's not a, you know, in terms of, it's not a huge amount, like it's less than a yeah. $50,000 difference. So that's interesting, right? That, you know, that, cause that does concern the town, right? We're concerned. I mean, we want people to be able to maintain their houses and maintain their businesses. And, and we certainly don't want to put them in a position where they're, they're gonna be in trouble. So it was, it was good to see that, that the, the town, as you say, is, is held up extremely well economically. I mean, the farmers had a good year. The, 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 the yes, machine isn't that dealership, fortunate? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've been lucky that way. So, but you're right. I, um, I mean, we know the vaccine's coming. I mean, I still think that before we see it in our part of the world, we're probably six to nine months away. That's what I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll come quicker for the first responders and doctors and nurses and teachers. I don't know that, but... Yeah, I mean, it w we just have to accept the fact that even when we do get the vaccines, it, it's still going to be a different world, right? Nothing's ever going to be quite the same again, right? Not, I mean, yeah. No, we're not going to be back to the way it was in February of 2020. No, no. That, that, that will no longer no. happen. And I think it's not, I think it's human nature to take an, a long time to understand that, right? I mean, yeah. I think we all gravitate to what we feel comfortable with, and I think we all just want that back, right? So I think it's... It's been eight months, but I think it's going to take another eight months, I think, for people to start to finally feel comfortable with our, our new normal. Well, I believe that part of that will be uh, a little thing in the back of your mind about apprehension about when's the next one coming. Yes. Because now we've lived through it. The reality is there's a very good likelihood there may be something else down the road. Yep, that's in right. In the not-too-distant future. Yep. Well, the processes we develop now that are successful will be those processes we go back to yep. then. So it's, it's really changed. I mean, it's, it's, it's put on things economically on hold. Uh, it's put a lot of just general social things on hold. We've had to make some major changes. Yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, I don't, you know, from a town's point of view, we've tried to, I mean, as you say, the Christmas lights, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a small thing. I mean, we've looked at the flats even, like, you know, we would like to, I mean, now that the Yellowhead Arena is closed, and I know the Nipah natives have now been pushed off till minimum January the 1st, and, and probably any other type of sporting events, uh, we have looked at putting our ice in down on the flats, and Denis has promised us that once we get through the code red, and I mean, it, it is the first time it might come off, I understand, is December 10th. And if it did come off on December 10th, then we're quite prepared to put our ice in and maybe even something a little bit better down there, more like an oval, so that they'd be able to be more social distancing when it comes to skating. We're even talking about maybe a, a crocono ice uh, surface down there where you actually use curling rocks kind of as, as a crocono thing. I guess it's been done in other communities. And well, not only that, <coughs> do you remember when there was uh, rocking the lake? Yes. yes. Where where yes. they did curling yes. on yeah. uh, yeah. Ivan Trail was very involved. In yes, that, I remember I that. I've seen pictures of and, that. Actually, and yeah. uh, you know, I, of course, now we can't do it because <laughs> of that thousand-year rain. I know. But looking at those kinds of innovative ways, and yeah. that's that's one thing I've noticed really strongly here yeah. in a variety of of uh, uh, scenarios is that people are starting to think outside the box. Well, if we can't do it this way. Is there a way we can do it? And some people have come up with some very creative ideas. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and I know it's hard because we see the bulletins that come from the town. Right. You know, generally in response to uh, a public uh, health announcement, <coughs> re reiterating. And, and I think a lot of it is confusion. And we hear these things. Dr. Rusin will say it is recommended. I know. And then the public health order comes out slightly different. Yes. And he's saying, yes, there's certain factors involved when you do a public health order, but we recommend even more. We, this is, and people say, well, why are you saying this and that happens? Lots of people are having trouble understanding that recommendations and health orders can be different things. Um, and I think it's a human nature thing again. I think yeah. people only follow rules that they believe are of fair value, right? I mean, you can slam in some type of draconian yeah. rules that people are going to go, well, you may think we're going to do that, but it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about with Dr. Roos. And they have to walk that fine line yeah. where they say to people, we really strongly recommend you do this, yeah. 
but if we were to put it into law, I mean, yeah, it'll be a... Well, it's like stick to your household. That's the recommendation. Yes, yes. But it's household plus five yes. in, the, in the order. And I understand why it's that. Yep. Because one of the big issues I'm, I'm seeing and I'm hearing from all sorts of sectors and other people is the sense of mental wellness yes. amongst families, amongst individuals, yep. amongst staff, yep. uh, in, in, in certain, uh, uh, well, in, in all jurisdictions. It's hard. No, it is hard. It's, and, and you talked about fatigue, and I think you're right. No, I think fatigue is going to be the biggest issue. And I mean, we're only at, and I mean, this sounds maybe a little depressing, but we're only at the beginning of winter, right? So, I mean, we still, yeah. the next four months, I think, are going to be critical to, as you say, the mental well-being and yeah. to the, 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 the fatigue yeah. factor that we have, right? That I think if we can slide through till next March, April, I think we'll, we're going to be on the, I think we'll be almost on the other side of that tunnel because I really think the vaccines will be there and I think they will be starting to come down into the first responders and nurses and teachers. I, and my <laughs> logic suggests to me that that will be the first group that are targeted. Yep. They're the frontline crew. Yep, absolutely. They're, they're, it's, it's essential. Yep. And, and I support that. Yeah, me too. I, I don't see. And I mean, um, we're lucky with the fact that, uh, I'm not lucky, I guess, but I think that I believe right now the province has made a good decision to keep the schools open. Yeah. I mean, they, they've, you know, they, that was a tough choice for them to make. Yes. I mean, they are getting positive cases, but I mean, it's, it, they've, I mean, in Nepal, we've had positive cases. We've had them at each one of our three schools, but yet they've done an extremely good job of, of containing them. Uh, well, and as, uh, as, as Dr. Rusin has mentioned frequently, they're not seeing the transmission happening in the schools. Yep. It's typically coming from outside. You isolate the, the, the cohort, do remote learning for two weeks, everybody's fine, bang, they come back in. Yep. And so they're not transmitting it. And I think, uh, I think one of the th things that I've, I've read and I've come to agree with, we are not doing enough testing. We're not testing asymptomatic people. I know. We need to be doing more testing. The countries that do have done more testing, like Korea, have never locked up anything. Yeah because they've been able to catch those other ones earlier. They were much more, they were much more proactive in understanding yeah. what this pandemic could yeah. bring, right? Because right they'd kind of been in those things before, Well, with right? the SARS epidemic, yeah. that got hit fairly hard. Yeah. So you know Same what? Same with Taiwan. I mean, we've, we haven't seen it for 100 years, and I just yeah. don't think we could get our head around it to start with, right? We just, I don't think any of us could ever believe we'd be sitting here today all, you know, walking down the street wearing masks and... And no, uh, that was a picture we had of certain <laughs> other countries yeah, or jurisdictions, exactly, yeah. and largely associated with smog. Yes, not yeah. not so much with pollution, not I so know. much with with worrying about infectious diseases. I know, and I mean, I, I like the fact also that governments are starting to again, as you say, they they understanding that rules can only work if if people will follow them, and I think they saw that people probably did engage too much at Thanksgiving, right? And then yeah. they saw the repercussions of that. And I think right. now they've gone, okay, reality is probably we're gonna see people getting together at Christmas. So now that's why they're starting to talk about adding two weeks onto the yes. Christmas break, right? Yes. And I think they're just accepting reality, right? And saying, you know There's what? There's going to be some, but yeah. how, can we, how can we get captured? Actually, I was just hearing a report out of the United States, uh, a, a really senior epidemiologist was saying, the states for Black Friday should look towards what happened in Canada at Thanksgiving. I know. And be prepared. I know. That that and they've got huge number of cases. So I know. it's it's uh, 2020, and I've heard this from so many people. Just been a crazy <laughs> year. I know. Uh, you look at the election <coughs> we just had in the states. Yeah. You look at what's happened with COVID. Uh, so many very bizarre things. It's. Uh, but you know what? You can also spin it around, Don, and say, you know what? From the positive side, I mean, just, I mean, look at the town of Nipua. I mean, you know what? Really, uh, I mean, we've been able to maintain our, our businesses. We've been able to maintain our schools. Uh, you know what? They, they, people are still walking the streets, and people are still being able to go out and ride their bikes. And, like, you know what? You can get caught into that, that, depression area, right? Where yes. You but you know, if you look, if you flip it around, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we are a very resilient society. Well, well and I was talking to somebody who, who's worked or was working with the, the uh, uh, Christmas community dinner, 
which clearly won't go ahead. Right. But they've got something else going on. Yeah. And and I'm sure there'll, there'll be an announcement out. But I thought, how ingenious and a combination of things going together and a, a ability for food, um, so that those people, well, you can't. And it was such a I, we I participated last year in helping out. It's just a blast, absolute blast. It was wonderful. It was so nice and 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 really Christmassy, yeah. if, if that's a word. Um, <laughs> And it, 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 trying to maintain some of that, you know, still have that outreach and just not say, oh, sorry, we can't do it. I guess we'll have to forget about you guys this year. This year. It'd be interesting to see when we come out the other side of this, whether society will fundamentally change or do you think we'll just go back to who we were? Um, <coughs> I'm optimistic that we will fundamentally change in some ways. I don't see how we can avoid doing that. I think it's extremely important we get back to the ability to be social animals again. Uh, I, I just, if that's a, a common theme, if there was a common theme to pick out, that would be the one for me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's great. We can do things, but it's not like being face to face. It's not like sitting down and actually being able to say, you get on your computer, I get on mine, we'll have a Zoom coffee meeting and we'll chat. Not the same as sitting across the table from I know. somebody. Yeah, I know. Or like a Christmas community dinner. Yes. Or, or uh, a number of uh, multiplicity of other things that go on. Uh, that, that will come back. But I know, for example, we've done a lot of stuff online and we will continue to do some on virtual platforms, but we'll go back to the, to the in-person contact, but we'll still have some of that. So those are the changes. I see businesses having more of those virtual meetings right. and sending people off oh, to, to meetings. Yeah, I know, I agree with that. Um, it, it, it will save some money. Why pay for a flight to Toronto hotel room when you can get on your computer at home <laughs> and still attend that, that particular meeting? So there we will see some changes, but I think everybody's really itching just to get back to I know, eh? being regular folk. You know, it gave us a little, it's funny, I was at the, uh, it just, it gives us a little bit of insight, eh? Because when I, I was at the Remembrance Day ceremony, and I mean, they did as good as they could. They social distanced as much as they could. And, and I don't, and I want, I think it was good of them to go ahead and still do a small. Yes. But, you know, the comments that were made there were saying, you know what, we're in this pandemic here now, but just track us back to 1939 when our soldiers, whether it be from Nipah or anywhere else yeah. in Canada, were heading off. And I mean, it was a five year soldier and, and yeah. they had no idea what their future was going to hold, right? They had no idea if it was going to be one year, three years, five years, they didn't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty remarkable when you think of the courage and the de dedication that that society oh, had at that time, right? To do that and to- Well, and it, was, it was about doing what was right. Yes. It was yeah. about doing what was right. This needed to be done clearly. Um, yes, uh, amazing, absolutely and amazing. And for somebody else. I mean, it was for, yeah. an, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, maybe it would have got to our part of the world at some point, but I mean, we were crossing an ocean. Yes. Be. Yeah, no, I, t I thought that was interesting. Well, really. and, and those kinds of things, I believe, are very important to still have a presence. Uh, I look at all our healthcare people. Yes. Um, I, I was just listening to uh, 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 a snippet on, on a radio, and a 30-year practicing nurse gave a tremendously warm and and <coughs> praising accolade to healthcare aides. All the hard work they do. Yes. We often hear about our doctors and yeah. our nurses and but just very clearly saying these people do so much within that, that care situation and sometimes are the unsung heroes. Um, uh, because nurses can't do it all. No, of course not. And, and they, they do a tremendous amount. So people praising other people and giving thanks. I'm concerned <laughs> about the tremendous burnout for I those know. frontline people. I know. It's, it's, uh, no, it would be nice if this, if this lockdown would, would bring the numbers back down, right? That they could get the control back of their hospitals and their intensive care, that's right? So, and speaking, I guess speaking of that, there are two things. Yep. One of the things that's come out is they're talking about the possibility of converting gymnasiums or community centers into COVID places. Right. Has that ever been mentioned to any no, of the it municipalities? Has not been brought, no, it has not been brought up in the town of Nipua, uh, whether that is... Is that something you are considering as a contingency plan, a potential? Yeah, I guess that they would, Prairie Mountain would have to bring that to us. 
like you know there wouldn't be an, an initiative we would even look at unless prairie mountain brought that to us and said okay you know what we see a huge issue coming here in nipah and we need you guys to engage with us but that that hasn't occurred so but you're right i mean they do have those models out there where they can bring in those uh, pop-up uh, area tents well, it's like yeah, it's like uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh military yes yeah. Dash tents. Yeah, they, they can bring them in and bang mobile. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? So, uh, and I mean, I, I mean, I'm hopeful we're not going to get there, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the next two weeks is going to tell us a lot here. So it, it will be interesting. Tell me, um, <coughs> just from your perspective, yep, and your staff at the town office, yep, how do you feel they weathered it? I think they've done really good. I mean, I, I, I think they represent the average person in the community. I mean, I think you, you, we all deal with uh, issues from a different perspective, dep you know, depending on where you came from and what your background is and what your age is and, and where you are in, 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 uh, in your place in life. But I, I, in general, I would say, yeah, I'm very pleased. You know, one, the one thing I really like is that, um, and I'm not trying to throw any other community and saying they didn't do it right, but we've kept our doors open. And, uh, you know, you can still walk into the town of Nipah. And I mean, we, you know, we have, we have the, the glass up and we yeah. ask you to wear a mask. Yeah. And, and obviously we would appreciate it if you were going into one of the back offices that you make an appointment, but we, we're not locking our doors. And I, I have a lot of, I have a lot, I give a lot of credit to, to Colleen and her staff and to, to, to have the courage to move forward and do that. Um, I think that's important. I think, uh, I mean, we have people standing behind counters at the Safeway or Co-op, you know. Yeah, you know, doing that know, day yeah, in, exactly. day out. And I, th and I think that we should be exactly the same way, right? I think this is our responsibility to the community to, to serve them. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy about that. I mean, we've had, we're no, we're no different, I'm sure, than no other part. We've actually had some people that had to go home inside our office or inside our, inside the public works uh, department, and uh, they had to self-quarantine, and some yeah. people have had to get yeah. tested, and some yeah. people, and so far we've been fortunate, there's been no positive cases, but I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we are coming into close contacts now. I mean, the longer we go into this, the more likely are that you're going to trip over somebody that, that is positive, and, yeah. and we understand that, and I mean, it's just part of the well, risk. The, the truth of this virus is they don't care how old you are, no. what your, 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 your biological orientation, you, yep. whether you're male or female or whatever, whether yep. you're, you're, you're whatever your ethnicity, your religious, they don't, it doesn't care. Yep. What it cares is, are you in a group of some sort? Are, uh, is there another prey I can jump to fairly easily? It, it really has no boundaries and, and it doesn't matter. No, I agree with you. No, I, I, you know, I'm very impressed with, uh, and like I said, I don't think we're any different than any other business in town. I think everybody's just doing the best they can. So you think, <coughs> generally speaking, the morale's? I think the morale's been yeah. really good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think in some respects it becomes a bunker mentality, right? Everybody kind of, you know. Hunkers down and yeah. says, we're going to do yeah, this, we're going to do, do this, this together, yep. we're yep. going to work yep. hard. That's exactly correct. Yeah, yep. because it can go the other way. Yep. And I mean, I, I'm part of Touchwood, and I mean, that's a big organization too, and they have the same mentality, right? And I mean, that's that's a much different animal than, than uh, the town. I mean, they yeah. have 80 staff, and they yeah. have a lot of individuals, and, you know, they have a lot of concerns there. And again, they've done it extremely. Well, it's a balancing act, because yes. just as you've spoken, you may have 80 staff dealing with, you know, however many number of people they deal with, and uh, there's interchange, and everybody has their own family, and when you start looking at yep. all the permutations yep. and combinations yep. that could occur, yep. it, it's, it's actually quite remarkable yep. that we're not seeing yep. that kind of spread. But I think we've been lucky because, for the most part, anything happening is coming from somewhere else. And if we catch it quick enough, it's containable, and that's... Yep. Theory is and I think leadership is really important. I think leadership, whether it be at settlement services or at the co-op or at the town or yeah. at Touchwood or at Prairie Mountain Health or I mean any of these any of these leadership areas, right? I think we I think it really has spotlighted what a capable community we are, yeah, and what caring people we have, and uh, yeah, I mean. I said when I ran, you know, I never thought I'd be sitting here talking about a pandemic, right? I mean, it's just something we never saw coming, but you know what, now that we're in it, I think I'm also very fortunate to be in a community that we have so many good, talented people to lead us.
Well, didn't at the beginning of your campaign people mm -hmm. say to you, it's going to be an adventure, Blake. <laughs> Look at the adventure. Yeah, okay. You yeah. know, okay, you have a th one in a thousand year reign. Yeah, yeah. You have a pandemic. A one in a hundred year pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Woo, what's next? <laughs> you usually come in threes, remember? Yeah, that's right. No, that's just, that is true. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh. So anything else that, that's coming down? So, for example, the province was right in the middle of an education review right. as well as a, a health review. Have have you heard anything more? Because no, both I of those that, will impact no, the No, I think that's good. You know, we talk about that at our, especially the health side. I mean, the yeah. town's always interested yeah. in the health side. I mean, yeah. education's important too, but yeah. that's that's kind of out of our out of our expertise. But the health, I mean, you know, people will still say to us, you know, you know we've been told that at some point the government's been looking at maybe a new hospital or a renovation or something yeah. here and you know we just have to say you know what it's just everything's on hold you know you yeah. if you talk to a minister they're just going to say you know what until the pandemic's over and i mean they're running they're running huge deficits now and uh it, yeah it's, it's just a different world yeah. um yeah i'd be interesting to see because even the models they had, right? Okay, so the models they had for it, you know, how they were going to revamp the education, yes. and the models they had, how they were going to revamp the healthcare system. Does that go all go out the window now? I mean, are they going to sit down after this and say, you know, a year from now and go, okay, well, you know, that didn't, those new models we have, they're not going to actually work in the world that we're actually moving into. So I'm wondering That's if, a good thought. you know, I don't know, they may go, yeah. you know, this wasn't one of our best ideas because I'm really thinking what we've seen in this is the, closer you get to the people in power, the more likely you are to have good results, right? And uh, obviously with the hospital system, the education system, they were trying to expand it out, right? So that you had less people on the ground in a town like Nipua or Minidosa, it would maybe be a headquarters in Brandon or Dauphin or we don't know Portage. And you know what, maybe they're gonna revisit that now and say, you know what, maybe we need to, maybe our experience is telling us that it's better to keep our local people engaged in this because they're the ones that can make a difference in a very short period of time if we were under crisis. Well, and, and given <coughs> the fact that in throughout Manitoba, there are a lot of these smaller communities growing. Yes. The, the conversations they could have now, for example, with Nipawa and the healthcare is different than the conversation they were having 10 years yep, ago. Yep, absolutely. Far different. The population is dramatically different yep. for one thing. Yep. Uh, let alone some of the, the, the sort of associated needs when you get a larger population. I mean, we're, again, we're just very fortunate that we got that middle school built in the timeline that we oh, did. Oh, good you, I can't yes. imagine where we'd be right now without that middle school. I mean, it would just be a disaster. I wow. mean, yeah, I mean, we're just so fortunate and, uh, I mean, we're still expanding, but it, yeah. I, it, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting times, right? I, I, I do believe that. You talked about that even with the way businesses are going to change how they, how they meet and, and, and interact with each other. I think you're going to see governments make fundamental changes, too. I really believe that. Well, they might do. And I think that's, I think you're going to see maybe new leadership, too. I think, you know, I think uh, this is wearing out a lot of, of people in positions of power. I mean, this is... So you think you're going to see a yeah. real turnover I at that think point? So. I think so. I think provincially, I think, you know, I think you are. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think, I mean, we're, th these these people run and they're dedicated people and, and uh, you know, but I, I you know, th this is this is a challenging time, right? And I mean, you're taking, we see it in southern Manitoba right now, right, with the, with the rallies and everything like that, okay. eh, where you're getting a huge pushback from a certain segment of society, right? And you're, and you're trying to do the right thing and and it, it, I think it's really difficult for the for these people to to stand in the firing line there and try to do the right thing for society. Well, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm noticing, for example, the the anti-mass protest in Steinbach, where you're getting so many incredibly tragic deaths. I know. As a result of COVID, and and <coughs> this is, I guess, this is just the nature of people. You're going to get these dichotomies. You're you going are. to get these differences. And that, that's but basically what, when you're living in a democracy, you're going to have these yeah. extremes on either side, right? And how do you ever get to that middle ground? Well, well, you see, prime example is the U.S. election. Talk about extremes. Nobody knew that that the response to things like racism and uh, xenophobia and all sorts of things was still so prevalent within the United States until this election it showed how divisive the country yeah. really is at yeah. the heart. And, and I think the pandemic has really highlighted oh, the, the, you know, the, the disparities between certain parts of our society. Well, you, know, right? you know what it's done? 
It's, it's done some very serious things with regards to um, talking to people I know in Europe, uh, some of their countries. It's just shown in, in some regards how non-prepared yes. their governments were. Yep. And yep. In the, even to make decisions, because to make decisions here, you know yourself, you can make a decision reasoned and thought out, you're always going to have detractors. It's just the way yeah. it is. Uh, you can't please everybody all of the time. So um, it's really brought those things to light. You know, I've, I, you know, I've said that years ago. Democracies really operate by crisis. I mean, democracies are, you know, you're not a, you're not a dictatorship. You, you know, so you, you try to, to get people to, to do what you believe is the right thing. But in, unfortunately, in a democracy, and governments are based on, on especially federal and provincial governments, they want to get reelected, so they don't want to push the envelope yeah. too far, so they need a crisis before they can actually implement some of their really tough decisions, right? Yeah. And maybe that's occurring right now, right? Maybe with this pandemic, you're going to see some of these tough decisions that they've been pushing off, right? Uh, you know what? Uh, th that's true. I think we're seeing a lot of those kinds of uh, vignettes or those windows and yeah. things. Um, I've got a question for you. We talked about the staff. How about the council themselves? How are they... Um, um, coping, do you think? That's you're, a good you're question. Counsel. Yeah, I think the council, I mean, except for myself and Murray, I mean, the rest of my council has, their, they've got everyday jobs they have to go to. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Maranka and Jason and Darren and, and uh, Daryl and Brian. I mean, so, uh, again, I give them a lot of credit for not only having to step up their game inside what they're doing, whether they're being in teachers or administration or Maranka. So, uh, yeah, I'm very impressed that they still come to our council meetings, they come to the table, they're still engaged, they still want to, to do the right things for our community. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know what, we're coming into our third year, so I think uh, wow. that's, it, that's the other thing, of course, is I think everybody's feeling a little bit more comfortable with who they are, and I think they're just starting to have a stronger opinion now, right? So, which is good, you know, we're starting to get more discussion at the yeah. table, and I think we, over the next couple of years you're going to see some more... Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to be, but I think you'll see some more discussions on some, some more tougher issues that we need to, to make a decision on. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting dynamic on a town council, right? Because I've said it before, right? It, it's it, it because, of, because of the nature of the beast. You, you, it, it's your administration staff that leads, right? And then it, it, and especially in our particular case where we had a turnover of, of five out of seven Yes. You know, so we, we were five new people. And so it, it's been interesting. And uh, I, again, I give a lot of credit to our administration staff not to not to try to take over. What they tried to do was guide us and, and show us our, our, our path. And now, now I guess they have to be a little careful what they wish for <laughs> because <laughs> because now that we have that confidence, maybe we're going to be a little more uh, decisive in some of our decisions. So it's it's it, <coughs> it can always be challenging to find that kind of enough sufficient knowledge base to be able to achieve consensus. Yes. Uh, that's that's always challenging. Yeah. Um, get a read. How are some of the other municipalities? I'm sure you're in contact with them. Uh, How do you think they're faring? Well, you know, our Scott Kenley, maybe I don't know if people knew this or not, our mayor of, of Gladstone, Scott Kenley, I mean, he had COVID. He's actually one of the yeah. very few people I know. I talked to Scott. He's doing well. Uh, he's finding it challenging in, in, in Gladstone. I mean, uh, Minto O'Dana, I deal with them. I've, uh, uh, Minidosa, I've talked to them. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, Rosedale, Langford. Yeah, no, you're right. This is, this is challenging times for everybody. Uh, you know, that one in a thousand year water event really affected the municipalities, right? I mean, that yeah. was a huge issue with them, right? Because, I mean, they had roads washed out and they had culverts gone and they, I mean, they couldn't even find some of their culverts. They didn't know where they went. So, I mean, they've had to pour a huge amount of money into to getting there. I mean, because, I mean, it's a farming community and people need to move combines and swathers and trucks and, and then we need to get school buses down roads. And so, I mean, they, again, I'm pretty, really impressed with how, how quickly they've put that back together. And I mean, it's, yeah, good for them. And I know they've got, a, they've got big bills sitting there too that they're hoping yeah. to disaster relief is going to cut them a check here at some point. So, <coughs> it's, it's. It's it's a matter. It's never, s never seems to be stable. Right. <laughs> it's ever changing, yes. isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose that's how the world moves. It, it, there are changes, and yeah. that's that's why I think 
we will never go back to that February 2020. No, and I it think It will you're be right. a, a variation of, but we will be doing some things differently than we did before. Yeah. And uh, also with that, as, as you mentioned, that sort of that, that view towards the future. Okay, now we've had this happen. What may be coming our way and how yep. do we prepare for it? Yep. What about your emergency response plan? I mean, you've had kicked that into gear <laughs> a few times. Uh, well, you know what? Again, we, again, we've been so busy with the COVID, but you're right. I mean, we, because of the one in a thousand year event, I mean, we did definitely found out some holes in our yeah. response and we are tweaking that. But again, you know, probably that's something we'll work on through the winter. I mean, it was nothing major, but I mean, yeah, we learned a lot in terms of well, certainly, yeah, especially in direction of how people, you know, should be moved around and how we use our RCMP and how we use our fire yeah. departments and our public works. Yeah, no, it was a big learning curve. So yeah. Well, I, 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 we mentioned it before here how fast the response was, yeah. and how pervasive it was through the community yep. members just yep. getting in, pitching yep. in, and helping. Yep. Uh, it was just one of those amazing kind of uh, respond to the crisis. Events. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah. again, it was almost because it was on July the 1st, we had almost too much of a response. Yeah. And so now we have to learn how to handle that. So, yeah, no. Yeah, because you don't want too little. No. <laughs> too much is better than too little. I but know. it yeah. still carries yeah. with it its own sort of logistical yeah. challenges. Yeah. No, you're right. And we have, we've already yeah. had discussions about that. So. Well, we've sort of done a fairly. <laughs> fairly uh, um, sort of varied romp. We've, we've taken a little walk down the country lane <laughs> and turned down different pathways yeah. in this conversation, but I think all relevant because everybody's talking about COVID and it's good to get a sense of where we are now. And, and we'd certainly be interested from our viewing audience if people had some comments and wanted us to, to kick some things around here. Um, all you have to do is call the NACTV line um, and uh, give your comments, and we'll make sure that they're they're aired and discussed in the in this forum. So um, uh, we're getting close to the end. Do you have anything you'd like to add or comment on? I don't know, Don. I mean, we still have one more one more of our get-togethers. I guess before yep, Christmas, before eh, Christmas eh, we'll have one yeah. in December. No, I just think what we talked about. Eh, I think uh, that that uh, that fatigue that's starting to set in on the COVID. I think we just we just have to d do the best we can to follow the rules and and I mean we're okay. we're doing it for the person beside us and we're, and we're doing it for yes. our healthcare system. Yeah. So having said that, I want to remind you, hugs for the holidays. Contact the home office to find out more. Some way we can help our our senior citizens in town, especially the ones that are. Are, um, um, don't have family close by. Uh, holiday train at home, a virtual, online, Saturday, December 12th, 6 p.m. Contact cpr.ca slash holiday train. Uh, you can also find that information on the Nipawa Town website. And time to light up Nipawa. Okay, put those decorations now with the LED lights. It's not as expensive as running the incandescent bulbs, <laughs> you can have those lights go, get a timer, yeah. even if they're on only for <coughs> three hours, two hours, four hours, whatever. It's just a nice gesture, I think, light up the town. Really looking forward to Christmas Eve, taking a tour around town, seeing who's got their lights on. Yeah, It'd this nice. isn't about money, this is just about someone just yeah. doing whatever they can to, to bring some... some, some yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're wrapping it up now. I want to thank our, our guest, uh, Mayor Blake. Thank you once again, sir. It's always a pleasure speaking with yep, you. Thank you. And uh, myself, Don Walmsley, your host. And to you, the viewing audience, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate the fact. It's a way of getting caught up on local, uh, municipal uh, interests and affairs and goings on, and an opportunity, if people wish, to ask questions of our, our council and our mayor. So from me, Don Walmsley, and uh, our Mayor Blake, have a great day. Uh, be safe. Uh, isolate. Do your hand hygiene. Wear your masks. Only go out for essential services. But keep in touch with people, whether it's by telephone or by uh, video or by email. Uh, make sure you make those kinds of social connections. But best of all, try and be happy. Be safe, and remember you can go outside for walks with your own unit, keeping social distancing. There's no recommendation against that, just uh, keeping it with your same household. So be safe, my friends. Bye for now. <laughs>